Welcome back to Moose on the Loose. My name's David, and today we've got a ton of stories, but our top story is this one here. Stephen Gilbo, fresh out of the bathroom, is shocked. There's more floaters than sinkers. This man has completely lost his mind. First, he put a mandate on buying electric vehicles. Electric vehicle availability standard that drives Canada towards all new light-duty vehicle sales in Canada to be electric or plug-in hybrid by 2035. This includes the interim goals along the way, beginning with 20% of all new vehicle sales be EVs by 2026. Almost all industry projections show that by the end of the decades, the decade at the latest, the purchase price of gas powered and electric cars will be about the same. Get on board. That would be my message. Recently, Stephen Gilbo was seen speaking at a luncheon event in the Western Montreal, where he said, we must stop thinking that electric vehicles will solve our problems. <laughs> this gets even nuttier. <laughs> Gilbo said overestimating the ability of electric powered transportation to solve the climate change and environmental crisis would be an error, a false utopia that will let us down over the long term. Gilbo noted that one quarter of Canada's greenhouse emissions come from transportation. While his transportation supports electrification of vehicles, it also has been heavily investing in other programs and plans to move Canadians out of private cars and onto public transit and other forms of transportation. Just wait, just wait. <laughs> he said the Liberal government has committed $30 billion to develop public transportation since 2016. The Liberal government also introduced an active transportation fund in 2021, investing $400 million into projects that encourage walking, cycling, use of wheelchairs, scooters, e-bikes, rollerblades, <laughs> snowshoes, snow and cross-country skis. Who's going to cross-country ski to work? Everyone, put up your hand. <laughs> oh. Besides funding these other types of projects, all levels of government must make a hard decision to stop expanding the road network, he said. Adding more roads and new lanes on existing roads has proven to encourage more car use, which means more congestion and calls for more road expansion. Our government has made the decision to stop investing in new road infrastructure. <laughs> this is coming from the government that lets in half a million immigrants per year and a, a total of 1.2 million people through the foreign students and foreign workers every year. We have a deficit of 5 million houses. If tomorrow you could snap your fingers and 5 million houses would be built, we would be, we'd be flat at zero. And then on top of that, we have 1.2 million coming in every year. And they don't want to build new roads with all these new people coming in? Is this just like, what is this? What? We, how did this fool get in? <laughs> Look at this ad that came up experiencing a mental health crisis. Yeah, I am. I am, man. What's going on? We have the most biggest bumbling idiot. <laughs> I can't even get that ad off it because it knows something's wrong. Because this guy's in charge. Oh my God. But what, what is going on? Somebody, somebody. This is the current state of housing in Canada. The federal government is responding to a report on homelessness encampments from Canada's national housing advocate. In her review of encampments across the country, Marie-José Ull points to all levels of government for contributing to a human rights crisis. Among her calls to action, Ull wants Ottawa to establish a national encampments response plan by the end of August. We can't uh, assume that we can address the encampments challenges without also addressing the underlying affordable housing challenges. Uh, it's not enough to uh, inject money into uh, local responses unless there's a long-term plan to find sustainable housing options for the people who are living in encampments today. Uh, so the housing advocates report uh, appropriately shines a light on the immense need the communities are facing and the people who are currently uh, unhoused. Uh, and we are working now to develop a, an appropriate response to help cities deal with the encampments and, and as importantly uh, to find sustainable and durable housing solutions for the people. Unhoused. It's called homeless. It's a, it's a nice flowery word for that. Dude, you are the immigration minister, now the housing minister. You're the biggest disgrace behind Justin Trudeau. Step one, cut off all immigration, period. 
right down to zero. Cut out all the foreign workers down to the bare minimum. Same with foreign students. No more foreign home buyers and no more corporations buying houses. There, I just told you the solution. Literally do that and you will see the housing situation in Canada come down big time in the next year or two. Just just play that back and do that. There, done. It's not, it's not rocket science, man. There's a ton of other stuff you can do. Housing accelerators, blah, blah, blah. That is the problem. I just told you, Sean Fraser, play it back. Play it back, man. Uhl is also calling on the federal government to end forced evictions of homelessness encampments. In our next story, buckle up for this because the RCMP, <laughs> you're not going to believe this. We're looking for high school students in grade 11 who identify as women. If that's you and you're curious about a career in public safety, we have a full week's worth of paid work for you. Register, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Woke till you're broke. That's what this country is all about now. This whole identify as stuff is just like enough. Enough of this nonsense. You know what happens when you allow this stupid nonsense to go on? You end up with this. This is a 50-year-old man who identifies as a 13 year old or like a teenage girl. And what did they do? They let him compete with 13 year old girls. See all these 13 year old girls? And this guy goes in the change room. This sicko 50 year old man goes and changes with 13 year old girls. This is disgusting. This is what the state of our country is. It's disgusting. This is disgusting. I'm gonna keep saying it. This is disgusting. Our country is run by idiots. While we're on the topic though of talking about Gil Bo, he was giving a climate uh, press conference and this happened. Some reporters got thrown out because he, Gilbo, didn't want him there. Sorry. What, what is, Mr. Mr. First of all, you don't touch him. Oh. What, what is, is his name? What, what is his name? I'm sorry, what is his name? Is it with you? You, what, ha what you is... have a card to be yeah, I have a card. Okay. I'm a press. What, uh, what he you just good? did to my colleague, uh, this is NBC. assault. You also need Who to are you? Could you go no, no, out, Who are you first? Madame, I will go out? out, but I need your name. Could you and go out, no, please? Not before he tell me his name. Yeah, Trudeau's thugs, you know, they don't, they don't want free press, obviously. They pay off their media. The media, they can't pay off like Rebel News. If they can't control the media, they don't want them there. Shazzy Goli on Twitter, he uh, posted this one, which is quite interesting. I've been waiting for more details on this story. I've been following it for a little bit. So the government spent $450,000 per person on Calgary uh, quarantine hotels. Now it's come out, yeah, it's the Weston Calgary Airport Hotel. They received $6.8 million to, to basically host 15 travelers for the quarantine program in 2022. The yeah, they don't want to build any new roads, but throwing away 6.8 million is no problem. Now, what I'm wondering, I'm going to start to try to dig is, does Justin Trudeau have a friend who owns this? Is that what's going on here? Because that's the obvious thing that would be going on. If, if either he has some sort of share or he's got a friend that owns the Weston uh, Calgary Airport Hotel. Like, this is beyond corrupt. And a side note. This ad here, like, look at this cat ball. My cat would love this. Actually, she's kind of lazy, but <laughs> still cool. Something a little bit more lighthearted. I will give you a, a heads up of uh, a little bit of profanity here. But <laughs> so this is in Prince George, just off the side of Prince George in a, a field. Somebody was very, uh, they just happened to <laughs> spell something out here. <laughs> That's not the first one of those I've seen. On X here, it's funny to see Liberal Party, some of the stuff they post. They find some face of uh, Pierre Polyev and then put all this stuff, protect our borders, no. Take uh, guns off our streets, no. Fight money laundering, no. And fund our intelligence agencies, agencies no. The money laundering is hilarious because you guys, if you've been following my channel, you know I've already broken it down a couple times. The money laundering is absolutely rampant, rampant in Canada. The bulk of it comes from China, through Macau, into our real estate markets. I'm sure a bunch of it's coming the other way now from India. Because uh, once you kind of get different areas set up in, in countries, then you get these networks of people. So I'm sure there's a bunch of money laundering coming from India straight into Toronto. But it's, it's rampant. That's, this is like the number one country for, for people to clean their cash. And I'm, Trudeau doesn't care, obviously. I wonder why that is. 
I've got another video here which I thought was uh, <laughs> pretty shocking. Uh, there's some climate activists. This is down in the states in Nevada, but it, check this out. The ranger's fed up. <laughs> it just... That ranger's had enough. Did anyone get that? Did you yeah. get that? There's a lot of this in BC. This cop's not messing around, man. So you notice this pipe here they're holding on to? Usually they're like sometimes they're cemented in or whatever. These guys are just actually holding on to it. They're not actually stuck in there. What I have to say about that is I've seen that happen on Vancouver Island here quite a bit. Uh, you know, people block roads and this and that. When it comes down to it, don't mess with everyday people's this is a highway, like that's dumb. Like go go to City Hall and block their walking paths or something like that. By all means, when well, you're blocking every day, people got stuff to do. People got mortgages to pay. It's really inconsiderate and, and arrogant to do that. I get the, the cause. Just go do it at City Hall. Go do it at Parliament Building. Go do it at, you know, the Capitol or whatever. Next up, this is hilarious. <laughs> obviously, Pierre's having a good laugh about this too. And it's funny, the article right underneath it here, you've got, uh, what's her name, Catherine Tate? Yeah, so Catherine Tate, she makes half a million dollars a year. She also run, runs up $119,000 in expenses and then complains about the immense pressure on her finances. This is the woman who just testified in, in uh, Parliament and she's still justified that she should be giving herself a bonus even though just laying off a bunch of people from CBC. I can't wait till CBC goes under and this woman doesn't have a job. I cannot wait. She is so corrupt. I'm sure she does absolutely nothing, nothing at the CBC. It just takes... A ton of cash straight out of our pockets. Just a worthless bag. There's a story here about a guy in, uh, it says right here, Bowmanville, Ontario, a brewery. I'll give you a little bit of backstory here. So a guy comes in and he's a member of parliament. This guy doesn't know. He starts talking with this guy in his, his brewery and they kind of just start, you know, hit it off a bit and start chit-chatting. And then eventually the guy's like, hey, can I host an event here? And he's like, sure, no problem. Uh, as long as, you know, it's during the week. So he books out the place and he tells him, oh, I got a special guest coming. And then he tells him, oh, it's the, uh, you know, it's Justin Trudeau. And he's like, oh, okay, fine. You know, if you listen to the full interview, it's 10 minutes long, but we'll just go through a little bit here. But basically he said he's in the middle. He's not, you know, he doesn't talk about politics. He's in the middle of the road. So he didn't really think much of it. And people have been sending all sorts of hate and terrible things. Hope your brewery burns down, all this kind of stuff. People caught wind of this. And while this was going on, they started just one-starring his, his brewery all the way to the bottom. Negative reviews, you've had bad phone calls. What, what's the fallout been? Yeah, like, the, like you said, the event went amazing. It's uh, every politician was here. A lot of local community figures, a lot of people from the community came out. It was a lot of excitement. Uh, the event was beautiful. Uh, we had a good talk with uh, the prime minister. He really loved our business concept and loved uh, the beer. Uh, and I knew something was wrong because I started during the event. I started getting uh, all of a sudden bad uh, Google review, bad Google review, bad Google review, started getting emails. I was like, oh, oh, something's going on. This guy gives a little bit of the rundown of the messages he sent. It's pretty wide spectrum of stuff. Yeah, it's like, after you, you're the worst person ever. How dare you have that traitor, that pedophile? Uh, that's the worst mistake you could ever made. We're going to cancel you. Look what happened to Budweiser. You, uh, we hope your business goes under. We hope you're, you're, you'll be dead within a week. Like your business will be dead within a week. Um, how I'm getting through it is, is the love and the support. And we're getting a lot of that too. So I don't want people to think it's doom and gloom. There's a lot of love and support. Yeah, so I mean, this is a pretty risky thing to do. I don't know if you realize that when he did this, but when you have the most hated prime minister in Canadian history, you don't want to associate with that man, period. That's what it comes down to because people, people can't pay the bills. People are suffering. People 
can't buy groceries. I mean, I buy all my groceries from the, uh, the Walmart $2 bags. It's like the discount produce they're going to throw out. That's what all I buy. I just go in and whatever is there, that's like today I got a bag of salad because it was half off and, you know, like a bag of oranges and I'm laughing. I'm like, perfect. Um, and I should note, sometimes those bags of produce are, they just have a new shipment that came in. So they're not bad. They're just, they're like the last 15 oranges or whatever. So they're fine. But, you know, people can't choose what they eat and they can't properly heat their houses you know, they're looking for a place to lash out. And if they can't get to the prime minister, this is the next best thing. So it's just, it's a risky thing to do to associate with Justin Trudeau because he is a terrible human being. He is a terrible man. So finally, we're going to take a look at a map here of the different ridings across Canada and the color. I'm seeing a lot of blue. <laughs> the, not the not the, the bad type of blue here, the good type of blue. So conservatives just dominating. You got NDP up here for some reason. Uh, and there's just, what, a tiny couple strongholds. And we got Montreal, still a stronghold for Trudeau. Maybe he's paid off every single person in there because he, he grew up there, right? Ottawa, still stronghold, but but fading. And you've got a couple of these Moncton. They got to be out of their minds. I don't know. Trudeau is is failing miserably, even on Vancouver Island here, where there are a bunch of nuts. Uh, and it was, it was all red here at one point. It's looking mostly blue, except the South. I don't know why people vote NDP here. They are just out to lunch they're out to lunch here like that's where we're gonna end this episode hope you guys are doing well we're getting through the winter here i just really fear because the carbon tax is coming a 23 percent increase what does that mean for our heating bills in the coming winter right now my last heating bill is 128 bucks and i'm like freezing in here i'm always wearing a jacket i'm wearing booties on my feet i've got heated gloves a heated jacket is that going to be another 25 30 so 33 bucks am i going to be paying like 185 bucks at the same rate of heat this time and you know next year or like in in december november like Oh, Trudeau, man. I'm getting a lot more active on Twitter. Go follow me there. I'll leave the link down below. If you guys want to check out some other content, I've got hiking channels. I'll link up a video here. We got to stay positive. We got to keep making fun of Trudeau because that's the number one thing he hates. So stay warm, stay fed. I'll see you guys in the next one.